Good evening and welcome to the news roundup for Thursday, August 24. Before we get into the news, please remember to like this video, share your views in the comments, and share the video with your family and friends. Reach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! Now for the news in detail. Preliminary reports indicate that a total of seven families, including adults and children, amounting to 30 people, are now homeless following Thursday morning's firebombing of houses on Rome and Rosemary Lanes in Southside, Central Kingston. The incident reportedly happened shortly after midnight. Well, preliminary reports are 30 individuals who have been affected by the, the fire. Everything back to school, bed, every single thing, working clothes, secret uniform, every single thing. Fridges. When we hear the baby ball, it's a fire, fire. We run out of the house, and the only thing we could have grabbed for the back of the water, the pipe side, and give a puzzle. And then if we turn around back, my boyfriend come out of the house with a tree pit in them. And all we have to do a child lick off the fence over there and go across the fence because the front part, we could have, we could have come through the front part of the gate. The baby was asleep, and the baby, they fire, fire. Daddy, mommy, fire, fire. And then we come and him throw the water, it blazes more. In split seconds, the house flat. We have to go through the wall over there. Sunshine girl Latania Wilson is one of several victims whose house was destroyed. Um, I'm kind of like feeling several different emotions um, right now. And I think the key lesson out of this is just to be grateful for life because one minute it can be on top of everything and then the next minute um, you can just lose everything in, in a quick second. And I think for me, it's just that I'm more grateful that I have life and whatever I've lost in the fire is um, actually repairable where I can actually, you know, work and get them back or Jamaica can actually assist me in getting them back. So I'm grateful that I have life. I was sleeping. <laughs> I was sleeping, um, I heard my neighbor shouting that fire, fire, but you know when you're um, sleeping and especially in a deep sleep, you're aware but not so much <laughs> aware of what's happening until um, everything become, you know, a little bit, well the place was parked and my sister started shouting that the fire was coming over our end. That's when I really realized that, oh, fire is here. <laughs> By the time I got up out of bed, the fire was at the back of um, the house. So I just put something on and while I was heading out, I remember my sister saying to me that, um, don't forget my laptop. My laptop was right beside the bed, so I just quickly, that's the only thing I could actually grab along with my bags. One man is in custody following the recovery of a cow on the Vauxhall Main Road in Magate, St. Elizabeth on Thursday. More from head of the St. Elizabeth Police, Superintendent Coolridge Minto. I'm here at the Magate Police Station. The police from the Magate Station at about 12.30 a.m. on Thursday morning Acting on intelligence, intercepted a white Mazda motor car. A search was done of the vehicle and the occupants, and it was revealed that a cow was found in the trunk. The driver of the vehicle was taken into custody pending further investigation. Prada Larson has been a challenge in this parish. We have been doing a number of things with our farmers, including establishing a farmer's watch. I want to appeal to anyone who has lost a cattle or a cow in any recent time to visit the Magati Police Station or the Black River Police Station and to bring proper identification to be able to identify this cow. The farmers of this parish are very important to us as a stakeholder. We are aware of the issue of Prairie Lasny to our farmers, both in terms of their cattle and their crop. And so this is an issue that we are taking very seriously in this division. We're establishing a team of officers that will pay special attention to Prada Lasny. And I want to assure the farmers in St. Elizabeth that we'll be meeting with them. We will be acting upon all the information that we have. 
and we're ensuring that we do all that we can to ensure that we bring Prada Lasny under control in this division. Two male porters at a St. Catherine Health facility have been arrested and charged with rape and grievous sexual assault of a patient at the facility, arising from an incident on Friday, August 18. Charged are 20-year-old Shamar Edwards, otherwise called Usher, of Clifton Bernard Lodge in Portmore, and 31-year-old Corey Orr, otherwise called Shortman, of Gravel Heights in Spanish Town. Reports from the Spanish Town Police are that about 8 p.m., a female patient went to a vending machine on the compound of the health facility to make a purchase. On the way back to the ward, Edwards reportedly led her to another area of the facility where he and Orr allegedly raped her. The woman reported the incident to a nurse who alerted the police. The men were subsequently arrested and later charged. The Jamaica Defence Force is reporting that it is currently engaged in a search and rescue operation to locate missing Clarendon fishermen Hilary Reed, Denroy Morgan and Dicardo Reed. The men have been missing since Wednesday, August 16. Reports are that the men left Rocky Point in Clarendon on Monday, August 14 to go crab hunting in Manatee Bay. When they did not return by the stipulated time on Wednesday, August 16, a family member alerted the Lionel Town Police and a search ensued. The JDF says over the past several days, it has deployed aircraft and patrol vessels from its air wing and coast guard in an extensive search for the missing fishermen and their vessel. To date, nothing has been found. A 19-year-old Westmoreland man was on Wednesday charged for the alleged rape of a 14-year-old girl at Knife Point. Richard McIntosh was charged with rape, assault at common law, grievous sexual assault and unlawful detention with intent to have sexual intercourse. The police say the alleged attack happened on the afternoon of Saturday, July 15. Reports from the Savannah Lamar police are that about 3 p.m., the young girl was pulled into a yard by a Macintosh and a knife was held at her throat while he sexually assaulted her. A report was made to the police and on Sunday, July 16, Macintosh was arrested during a police operation. His court date is being finalized. St. Thomas resident, 20-year-old Mario Lewis, has been charged for the stabbing of his girlfriend during an argument about infidelity. Lewis, otherwise called Gizmo, of Winchester District in Golden Grove, was charged on Wednesday with wounding with intent. A date is to be set for him to appear in court. The Golden Grove Police report that 2 p.m. on Tuesday, July 18, Lewis and his girlfriend were at his home when an argument developed between them about infidelity. The police say a struggle ensued and Lewis allegedly used a knife to inflict a stab wound to the woman's neck. She was taken to the hospital where she was admitted in stable condition. The police say Lewis was apprehended on Saturday, August 19 in Winchester District, St. Thomas and was later charged on Wednesday, August 23. The Education Minister says local school administrators will continue to have flexibility over the implementation of the new dress and grooming policy. Minister Williams announced that the new draft policy is set to take effect in September. A key change under the policy is that Rastafarian students will no longer be required to cover their hair. The minister says despite retaining flexibility, school administrators should cease the practice of locking students out for grooming breaches. A St. Mary man has been charged with murder after he allegedly chopped a taxi operator to death who was accused of raping his teenage daughter. Dead is 34-year-old Negus Da Costa. Police say Da Costa was chopped to death on August 16 after the 13-year-old girl told her father that he raped her. Lawmen say the father allegedly attacked Da Costa and chopped him several times. He was rushed to hospital where he was pronounced dead. The father, also a taxi operator, turned himself into the police on Monday. He was charged on Wednesday. The police in Westmoreland have charged a man in connection with the shooting of a cop earlier this month. Stephen Tyther, otherwise called White Man, of Delviland District in Little London, is charged with shooting with intent, possession of a prohibited weapon, and unauthorized possession of ammunition. The incident happened at a club on August 6. Reports from the Savannah Lamar police are that about 4.30 a.m., Tyther and another man allegedly fired at the cop, hitting him. The policeman was taken to hospital where he was admitted. Tyther was arrested on August 17 during a police operation. 
He was charged on Friday, August 19. An elderly man was gunned down in Clarendon on Wednesday. The deceased is 79-year-old Parnell Scott of York Circle in the Yorktown section of the parish. Reports are that about 6 p.m., residents heard explosions coming from a section of the community and alerted the police. On their arrival, Scott's bullet-riddled body was seen lying on the ground. He was transported to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. No motive has yet been established for the killing, but the Clarendon police are probing the development. The Spanish Town police are investigating an incident in which a 47-year-old sales representative from St. Diego Heights in St. Catherine was recently shot and injured by a police constable. According to reports, the sales representative was shot after allegedly throwing hot soup on the police constable and attempting to brandish his firearm. The altercation began when the cop noticed that the sales representative's vehicle was blocking a section of the Walks Road thoroughfare. The constable reportedly shouted at sales representative instructing him to move his vehicle off the road. The sales representative then reportedly threw a foam cup with the soup at the constable. After identifying himself as a police officer, the policeman reportedly noticed that the sales representative was attempting to pull a firearm from his waistband. The constable, armed with his license to firearm, opened fire and struck the sales representative in the upper and lower abdomen. The sales representative was rushed to the hospital for a treatment. A Glock pistol containing one magazine and 17 9mm rounds was seized by the police at the scene. The Independent Commission of Investigations Indicom and members of the St. Catherine Police Scenes of Crime Unit processed the scene. In business, the Bank of Jamaica sought to clarify its position regarding Monday's comments by its Governor Richard Biles about the potential impact of large wage increase on the country's inflation rate. This follows backlash from several Jamaicans on social and traditional media who have taken serious issue with the call for a wage restraint. In a statement Wednesday afternoon, the central bank says at this time, large future wage adjustment in the context of the tight domestic labor market constitute one of the potential headwinds that could result in higher than projected inflation in the future. The BOJ says if large wage increase translate into increased prices, there will be a cost push-up effect on inflation. However, it says if large increases are matched by increases in productivity, such wage increases will not impact the inflation rate. The central bank also believes wage increases at the level of the current inflation rate will not have a significant impact. Many Jamaicans have drawn attention to a previous comment by Governor Biles that the massive wage increases for public sector workers would not impact inflation. In Wednesday's statement, the BOJ says its response in May to questions about public sector wage increases noted that adjustments to wages for specific groups is not a matter on which it makes comment. However, at the time it stated that while all wage increases will have an impact on inflation, the total figure reported for public sector wage increases did not constitute a large numerical impact on inflation. In sports, just as she did at the Beijing World Championships in 2015, Danielle Williams turned the field to win gold in the women's 100 meter hurdles on Thursday. Williams stormed to a season's best of 12.43 seconds for the gold medal. Antonia Watson was crowned the champion in the 400 meters, the 21 year old powered to 44.22 seconds to win Jamaica's first gold medal in the event since 1983. Wayne Pinnock and Tajay Gill took home the silver and bronze medals respectively in the long jump with Kerry McLeod finishing fourth. Meanwhile, Rochelle Clayton caught the bronze medal in the women's 400-meter hurdles. And on the entertainment scene, Stephen Marley recently announced that his 14-track acoustic-inspired album, Old Soul, is available for pre-order. The album features appearances by brothers Ziggy and Damian Marley, Eric Clapton, and Buju Banton, among others. Old Soul is scheduled to be released on September 15. The title track, which is somewhat of an autobiography, went on streaming platforms two months ago. And that is it for your news roundup for today. We would appreciate you liking this video, leaving a comment, and sharing the video with your family and friends. Have a good evening and see you next time.